Hello, I'm Mr. Craig, and I wish to work out these questions here. Uh, they'll be interestingly numbered, but I have them on the sheet to which ones we're doing. So let's get started. Looking at number one, this is very similar to the type of problem that we had the last time, uh, where you just simply find the molar mass of the compound, and you'll do this in every one of the problems, regardless of um, the type of well, you'll do it in most of the questions. So let's get right to it. So copper has a molar mass, <coughs> excuse me, of 63.55. So we have one copper, 63.55 grams per mole. Uh, we have one sulfur, which is 32.06. So again, 32.06 grams. And we have four oxygens. So again, when finding the molar masses, simply look at how many you have, and then find the molar mass on your periodic table, add all of them up, and in some cases you may need to multiply to get the total mass of that compound, or I'm sorry, total mass of that element. And in this case, the molar mass is 159.61 grams per mole. Okay. All right, let's skip down to number eight. And the question wants to know, find the number of moles if one has 15.99 gram, I'm sorry, 15.9 kilograms of sodium acetate. Um, as I said in the lecture, again, you might be given milligrams, kilograms, uh, megagrams, whatever. But again, we want to change whatever this metric gram amount is into regular grams. And then, of course, change to moles if asked to do so. And then we could take it another step and convert it into molecules. And last but not least, we could definitely convert it into atoms as well. And again, realize that this process could be reversible. But the neat thing about this is it is a one-directional type of movement when you do these calculations. And always, I would write this at the top of your page so that you know where you're starting. Like in this case, we're starting with kilograms, and it wants to find the number of moles. So what this means is I'm going to convert kilograms into grams, and then I will convert the grams into moles. So there's at least two steps in this problem. So have this up here. Um, this will help you out tremendously, and whenever you're working these problems out, this is the stepwise progression you want to move. And if you start with moles, you're either going to go that way or that way. You're not going to go that way to find out how many kilograms. You're not going to convert your moles into molecules if you're looking for kilograms. You'll convert your moles into grams and then the grams into kilograms. But that's not what we're doing. We're going to start off with what we know, which in this case is, let me change the color there. Start off with 15.9 kilograms of sodium acetate. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to change kilograms into, very good, grams. So I'm going to scoot that over. Come on over here. And don't forget your conversions. So if it's not the unit you're looking for, move it diagonally. We're going from kilograms to grams. And again, just like in factor labeling, if you need to do this, go ahead and show the units first. And then what we'll do is we'll convert the grams into moles. So this will be our stepwise progression because the question wants to know how many moles. And so if you want to do that, that's fine. It's your call. Ask yourself, which one's bigger, kilogram or gram? Very good. The one to the farthest to the left. So when you look at the great mega king, kilogram is much, much larger. Gram, there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. Make sure you know that. No, make sure you know the conversion between grams and kilograms, grams and milligrams. So those are the two very, very predominant type of metric units that we use um, in your everyday life, so to speak. All right, so there's our conversion. If we were to cancel out our units, we would have grams right now. But we need to go a little bit further. We need to convert this into moles. Don't forget, whenever we're looking for something, we always want to make sure that we're looking for one mole in our problem, one mole of whatever it is that we're looking for, so in this case, sodium acetate. Okay. Oh, sorry. Whoa, that's not sodium acetate. Oh, 
that is not sodium acetate. That is a different organic compound, C3H5O3. Sorry, not acetate. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that gram. Okay, and let's find out what the molar mass is. So again, sodium, looking at your periodic table, you can find that sodium is 22.99 grams. Uh, we have three carbons, which is 12.01 grams. We have five hydrogens, so five times 1.008 grams. And then we have three oxygen, so three times 16 grams. And when we look at that, all of that adds up to, what is our molar mass for that? Uh, it's like 112.03.06 grams. Okay. So there's our molar mass. Now, when we go to solve for this, the best way to type this in is I have 15.9 times 1,000. Or if you need to do 10 to the 3, that's okay. Divided by, open up your parentheses. And if you are going to type all that in, 22.99 plus 3 times 12.01 plus 5 times 1.008 plus 3 times 16. And when you do all that, then your answer should be around 142 moles. Okay? So that's 1. 142. Okay, 142 moles. Okay. All right. We start off with grams of silver iodide. So if we start with grams, then we're going to go from here to here. So it looks like it's going to be a, a one stepper. Okay. So start off with what you know. In this case, we have 0 0.057 grams of silver iodide. And again, this is a one-step process because we are starting with grams and we're going to moles. So don't find out how many kilograms and then convert it back to grams to find moles. Some of you will do that. I don't want you to do that. That's way too much work and you don't need to do that. So we're going to move our grams diagonal. So let's find out what the molar mass for that is. So silver is 107.87, I believe. So 107.87. Iodine, yep, iodine is 126.91 grams per mole. And when we add those guys up, we get 234.71, I think, 78 grams. And again, this is for one mole of silver iodide. So to find how many moles we have, take 0 0.507, divide by, open up your parentheses, 107.87 plus 126.96, close that parenthesis, and that gives us around 2.43 to the negative three moles. So a very, very small amount there. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the next one. In this one, it's asking you to find the number of molecules. So we start off with moles, and this is not as difficult as you would think, because when we look at the equation here, Whenever you go from moles to molecules, that's when we get to use Avogadro's number. Or whenever we get to go from molecules to moles, that's when you get to use Avogadro's number. So when you go from here to here, going from moles to molecules, you're going to multiply by Avogadro's number. And when you go this way, then you'll divide by Avogadro's number. But you don't have to memorize that because, again, your factor labeling will take care of that for you. But this is when we go from or we use Avogadro's number when we go from this way to that way. All right, so let's take a look at that. Um, so again, start off with what you know. In this case, we have 7.2 moles of N2 
2O. And this is where you have to be very careful. The unit that you're looking for is not moles, so we need to move it diagonally. So one mole of N2O goes on top. And what we are not going to do is we are not going to find the molar mass. Why? Because of our pathway. It doesn't ask us. We're not going to go from here to here and then go back in that direction. You, it's a one directional path. So we never find moles, I'm sorry, we never find the mass when you know the moles and you're looking for molecules or atoms. Because again, what we're trying to do, or at least most of the problems, is you're trying to find out how many moles you have. That is a common thing on the periodic table. When you look at the periodic table, all of these units of mass represent one mole. So that is a, a like a central point that we want to go toward. So in this case, since we already have our moles, we don't need to find our moles. We have it. And so now we get to use Avogadro's number. We're going to go from moles to molecules. So 6.02 times 10 to 23. And that's molecules. So in this case, it's 7.2. And make sure you can do this on your calculator. 7.2 times 6.02 EE. 23. And that will give us what? 4.33. to the positive 24 molecules. Okay, so that's not bad. That's actually a pretty nice problem, but again, this is a typical problem that you could see. Okay, all right, so here we have 351.0 grams of monobelium uh, chloride, actually, monobelium Roman numeral 5 chloride, so again, start off with what you know. 51 grams of MOCl5. So again, we're going toward, or we're going to molecules. So if we start off with grams, okay, that means I need to change my grams in the moles, then change my moles in the molecules. So make sure you're doing that stepwise progression correctly. So the first thing we need to do is do our conversion. Okay, so grams are going to go down one mole of CL5. Now, monobelium is not one that I use very often. It's somewhere over here, it's like I'm not far enough over. MO, there we are, 95.94. And we have one of those, 95.94 grams. Plus, we have five chlorines, which is 35.45 grams. And how did I get that from looking at the periodic table? Again, chlorine 35.45. And so if I stop right there, that gives me my moles, but that's not what the question is asking for. So one mole of MOCL5. And again, this is where we get to bring out Avogadro's number. So in one mole of MOCL5, I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of MOCl5. So let's get a number there since we're finally where we need to go. Now this one's a little tricky so here's how we would type this in. 351 times 6.02 EE 23 divided by, open up the parentheses, 95.94 plus 5 times 35.5, close it up, equals. And when you do that, you should get 7.73 times 10 to the 23 molecules.
let's look at our last one. So in this case, it wants to know the number of atoms if one has 9.42 moles of potassium chloride. So again, we're looking for atoms. And again, keep this process in mind since we're starting here, going to convert to mole, I'm sorry, moles to molecules, molecules to atoms. If you start way over here, which we will have a problem like that, and I think I've shown you that on the examples, convert to kilograms to grams, grams to moles, moles to molecules, molecules to atoms. So always know where you're starting and then ask yourself, where are you going? And it's a one directional path. Don't, don't go backward to go forward. All right, so looking at this one, so start off with what you know. We have 9.42 moles of potassium chloride. We do not need to find the molar mass, which is nice because we don't need to find that since we have our moles. So one mole of potassium chloride has 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules of KCl. And it wants to find out how many atoms. So again, move your unit diagonally. So in one molecule, what we're always doing is we're always making sure that we put the larger value with the unit one. So a molecule is bigger than an atom. A mole is bigger than a molecule. So those are we're keeping that consistent. So in one molecule of KCl, how many atoms are there? Well, there's one atom of potassium and one atom of chlorine. So there are two atoms in one molecule of KCl. Isn't that cool? Then to calculate this out, 9.42 times 6.02 EE. 23 times 2, and since those are both 1's on the bottom, you don't need to worry about that. And in this case, we have 1.13 times 10 to the 25. Again, this one is a little more involved than the last worksheet that we'd worked out. And this one's starting to get into some of the fun chemistry or start, starting to get into the fun math. Show your units. Show your process. Show everything. That way, when you're not sure what you're doing and you come up and ask me a question, I can look and I can point out immediately what it is that you're not doing. Hope this video was helpful.